All right, guys. Well, here I have a 4T65E, uh, 4T65E, 2006. Uh, General Motors are easy tags, uh, you know, to uh, identify. The first number is always the the year model. Uh, we're going to do a basic teardown on this. It was slipping uh, in second gear, and uh, I mean, it's, the fluid smells pretty burnt up. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do, we like always, you know, take everything from the outside. This one doesn't have a transmission rain sensor here on the outside any longer. Uh, the transmission rain sensor is on the inside of the transmission. Uh, we have our vehicle speed sensor here, our VSS. That's uh, our where our front, uh, where our torque converter uh, goes into. Uh, turbine shaft and the pump drive shaft and the stator support. All right, well, uh, to, to begin with, uh, we're gonna remove the uh, torque converter clutch uh, O-ring here. Remove this O-ring. Take this thing out of the way. O-ring. Get that out of the way. We're gonna get a hammer, and uh, we're just gonna tap on this, get it loose. There we go. Get it loose a little bit, and then we're gonna get a uh, some pliers and hold down the servo cover. This is our reverse servo. Gonna remove that now. Just to hold down the cover, then we get a screwdriver, go up underneath the uh, snap ring, go around, take the snap ring out, release the pliers and kind of hold this because it's gonna jump out. There we go. Reverse servo cover, reverse servo, and as you can see, the condition of the fluid, it is uh, pretty yellow, kind of uh, looks like thin motor oil. All right, take our uh, vehicle speed sensor off. Kind of twist it a little bit, sometimes the uh, the O-ring gets stuck on the aluminum, just kind of twist it and then it, it comes out. This one came out fairly easily. And you can see on the speed sensor, it's got a, it's a magnetic sensor, right? Uh, so it's going to have a little bit of a fine metal attached to it, you know, to the speed sensor. Alright, well, whenever you remove the, the uh, 4065 from the vehicle, you have a bracket here that goes to the engine. So this two, uh, th there's two bolts here that the R and R guy has it over there by the car, and you have only two bolts installed on the uh, extension housing. So you don't get confused. Just uh, mark them. You know uh, th these two bolts mark an X. So whenever you putting this thing back together, you know that those uh, two bolts go there. All right, get in a 13 millimeter socket. Thirteen millimeters. Tap. Extension housing comes out. Now this will come all the way out if you take the axle uh, snap ring off. On some four T sixty E, this is a four T sixty five. The differential won't come out because it has a bearing in there and uh, it won't come out that way, but this one will. Just kind of pull on it. There we go. So you want to you wanna take this uh, snap ring out for, uh, for it to slide out. And here we have uh, planetary gear on the uh, top of the differential. This is our differential here. We have our sun gear. And uh, there are different gear ratios on the sun gear, so you got to pay attention to that. If you're gonna, if uh, you need hard parts, I mean, you really need to match up the differential uh, sun gear on it uh, because they're different. Also, the reluctor, they are different. This is a 30 teeth uh, reluctor ring, and uh, there is a 30 on there. I'm not sure the camera's picking this up. But there is a 30 stamp on it. Get that thing out of the 
way. So we got our differential uh, removed. Here's extension housing all ring. All right, we already removed our uh, torque converter clutch uh, O-ring. You don't install that, uh, you're not gonna have a torque converter clutch apply. And this studs right here on this model, it looks like they're not used but on some models you have wiring harnesses going through it like, like the Volvo 1465 you really need uh, the studs where they come out and we're gonna do the same thing here we're gonna mark them on X and those studs are gonna go back into their same position 13 millimeters we're gonna remove all the 13 millimeters around and then we have four uh, Torx 40 This is actually our side cover. There's a mount that goes here on the driver's side uh, of the vehicle. It's a transaxle. Tilt a little bit this way so you all can see uh, the T40s right here. You got to clean it up. dig in there with the uh, with the pick and what I do I just uh, get my socket and just tap it in and all that mud is gonna compress and then you can just break it off you want to make sure that the socket goes in uh, deep enough because if it doesn't uh, you're gonna strip them and once they're stripped you're gonna have to use a chisel and uh, chisel them out all right I think they're kind of clean enough let's see this tap is in there Take this other one. These two over here, they look fairly clean. But whenever you see that, just make sure you, that you uh, kind of clean them the best you can. Okay, so now our side cover can be removed. Just pull up on it. We have one more bolt. I'm going to lay it to the side. There we go. We got one more uh, 13 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and remove that. Alright. And it falls off. As you can see, uh, the color of the fluid looks kind of yellowish, looks like motor oil, and it smells a little bit burnt. Uh, that's just overheated fluid. That is the way that the fluid looks when it gets uh, real overheated. Okay, electronics on this unit. We have a pressure switch manifold. This, is, this one only has one pressure switch in here. Uh, earlier models have uh, it's a bigger pressure switch manifold uh, has more switches this is just a one wire a one switch pressure switch manifold we have two shift solenoids on off solenoids 
we have our transmission range sensor right here uh, on the earlier models it was outside you know neutral safety switch uh, some of you guys know it by that name this is our pressure control solenoid this is our torque converter clutch solenoid it's a pulse width modulated solenoid here we have our uh, input speed sensor or turbine speed sensor and our uh, temperature sensor down here so that's basically all the electronics in here our fluid pump is right here let's go ahead and uh, carefully remove this gasket this gasket does not come in the kit so uh, and it's a reusable gasket so if it comes out in good condition in good shape uh, you can reuse this otherwise I mean it's a $75 gasket so kind of be careful with it all right let's go ahead and disconnect our electrical connectors and did you see that uh, they get brittle the plastic get brittle and uh, it breaks off so kind of be very very careful trying to disconnect these things now that broken tab here locking tab uh, it's okay it can be reused this is for a pressure control solenoid and it goes in kind of snug just kind of a uh, you know put a tie down and you know uh, affix something to it so that it won't be loose uh, there's actually no vibrations here uh, it's not going to become undone uh, I know there's a lot of fear so you guys that that thing that they're going to become disconnected they won't I mean as you see here I'm pulling pretty good there we go so uh, I mean this is a fairly tight connection or if you want to just uh, get a new uh, internal harness they are available new aftermarket I think Rostra makes them uh, you can get OE style temperature sensor and then it's just attached this one here is just clipped on there we go it's just clipped on so basically we only have one broken tab the rest of them they came out fairly easily set that to the side we have a uh, an inverted Torx uh, bolt right here uh, no big deal 8 millimeter socket it comes right out all right, so I got my eight millimeter socket here. It comes right out. There we go. If you want to purchase the socket for that, I mean, you know, go right ahead, but it's not needed. All right, let's go ahead and remove our pump here first. We got two 13 millimeters and the rest of them are 10. Remove our two tens. Now, in earlier models, uh, the paper gasket, the channel plate gasket, that's that's what they called. These two bolts sometimes would have been uh, loose from from factory and uh, or not torqued properly, and they had a paper gasket. And uh, on the uh, they still make them with uh, paper gaskets. Uh, you tear down one of these units and it still has paper gasket but there's a updated channel plate gasket that uh, it's metallic and what used to happen is that the gasket would rip and uh, it would uh, leak out of the breather you know it was spraying fluid all over here and then it would just I mean just gushed out of the breather right and the breathers right here I mean if you can see that that's our breather all right let's go ahead and remove our pump this is a uh, vein type pump, vein type. As you can see there, the veins, you know, like a 4L60E. I got a 4L60E teardown and rebuild videos. I got both of them, the teardown and the rebuild. And uh, I mean, you can see the veins. It's got a rotor in there and it's got veins. This is uh, pressed together. I'm gonna take it apart, but not now. Let's go ahead and just uh, dig into the inside of the barrel of the case and start getting everything out and uh, check, check out, see what, what actually is burnt on this unit get this thing out of the way pump bolts over there pump right here 
Okay, so we got two uh, T30 or uh, Torx T30s here. We will re remove these two bolts here to take the valve body off. You don't have to remove the uh, pressure switch manifold if you don't want to, uh, but we're going to remove it so you can take a look at it. So basically, these two bolts are attached to the channel plate. They go through the valve body, and uh, this bolt right here. It's attached to the valve body and it just, uh, it's a hold down bolt for the uh, pressure switch manifold. And uh, it's just a pressure switch here. Uh, fluid pressure goes out through that hole and, uh, I mean, pressure goes in, compresses that switch, and it closes that switch. Some of them are uh, normally open, some of them are normally closed. We'll get our voltmeter and see which one this is normally open or normally closed. All right. Since I got my eight millimeter socket, I already got this removed. Get that one. Let's get our ten. Let's get our T thirty. All right. Uh, one more ten and a thirteen. This 13 millimeter bolt right here, uh, make sure that it is tight. This one goes all the way to the uh, uh, center support, and uh, if it's loose, it's going to be separated from the channel plate, and it's going to leak fluid. It's going to probably not have second gear. It's going to have missing gear. All right, 113 inverted uh, Torx. Get all our tens, the two torques, and the other eight. All right, there's four check balls on the channel plate. Kind of uh, when you remove this, uh, kind of hold the separator plate with the valve body. Kind of wiggle it, and this should come right off. There we go. Check ball fell off. Two check balls fell off. We have a uh, guide pin right here. This one goes here, in that position. Let me pick up these two check balls. It's got four check balls. One goes here, one goes here, one goes there, and one goes here. One, two, three, four check balls. We've got this guide pin. Let's go ahead and get them out. Four check balls. Our pump uh, drive shaft. This end goes into the torque converter, and this end goes into our uh, pump. This one has a uh, molded uh, separator plate. You can see the brown right here. Uh, the gasket is molded into the plate. Uh, it can be reused as it is, or you can get a new uh, separator plate. Uh, sometimes uh, the check balls will eat the plate up and they will cross from one side to the other. Very common on Volvos. Volvos have the same thing, uh, molded separator plate, and uh, they do have that problem. So uh, it's best, you know, to just go ahead and replace it. Let's go ahead and just lift it up. It has two tabs here that hold down the plate, plastic. Go ahead and remove those, you don't want to lose them. You have uh, two screens, two little thimble screens, one here, one here. Uh, those screens are for the shift solenoids, shift solenoid screens. We got more check balls here in the valve body. We have two large check balls, one and two. And we got one, two, three, we got four uh, regular size check balls. Okay, one, two, three, and four, and the two big ones. Oops, there we go. Atta boy. Put in with the rest of them. You can use a magnet. I know that, uh, you know, in theory, if you use a magnet, you know, the check balls will become magnetized and, you know, all that stuff. 
but they work under pressure. They're always working, so uh, it really doesn't really matter if you grab a magnet to pick up the check balls. Nothing happens to them. The fluid pressure will always overcome. If they get magnetized, it's going to be very little. And that molded spacer plate, I mean, it's not really uh, uh, like the old ones that it was made out of uh, steel. Uh, but I have never seen anything, uh, issues by using a magnet to remove the check balls, ever. So uh, it is safe to use them. Okay, I see that I have a valve completely stroked on the on position, which is this one here. Uh, tear, we'll tear down the whole unit and uh, we'll come back to this valve. Sometimes they get real wore out and the anodization of the valve uh, uh, falls off and uh, when that happens, uh, valve body needs to be replaced. Way. All right, so we got our channel plate here. If you want to remove this bolt, you can. If not, uh, it's it's okay as well. We're gonna remove it so that you can see how the uh, manual valve is attached to the linkage. So we have our uh, D10 roller here. That's a little roller, and this is what clicks, click, 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 click when you go into uh, through the gears. Now there is a little uh, cage wire here on the manual valve. Let me uh, get the trimmage closer. I don't want to zoom in on the camera and zoom out. I mean, look at my hands. So uh, I'd rather just get the trimmage closer to you. So you get the spring back, down, and out. And there we go. We have our manual valve uh, detached. And this one you just pull up and it comes off like that. Don't forget to uh, install this because it depends on where, where it's going to be, uh, the manual valve is going to be stuck. It's probably going to be uh, forward only or maybe it's not going to move at all. You're going to go through the gears and nothing will be there. Uh, just be careful. All right, transmission rain sensor. Manual valve like wants to come out. Let's go ahead and remove our channel plate here. There is a uh, Torx down here. Let's go ahead and take the Torx out first. Right here. Torx 30. Get that out of the way. Let's get our eight millimeters off. Got one in here. Got another one right here. One right here. One, two, three, four. All right, four eights. Get our 10 millimeter. Now, these three bolts right here, sometimes they are very, very, very tight. If you go with your impact and it doesn't want to come out, you know, get your, uh, you know, you got to beat it out. You got to make sure that they become loose. That was good. That was easy. Always try to use your best socket for these three bolts. The other ones, it doesn't really matter. They come out easy. All right. Get your screwdriver and just kind of start prying. Start prying and start praying. All right. Go ahead and take our manual valve and just take it completely out of the channel plate. We don't want to damage that. Okay, so the first frictions that you're going to see here underneath the channel plate are the uh, fourth clutch. It's two clutches. Now this steel, see the discoloration? That is normal. All this around, that is the way this uh, steel looks like. This is not normal. This little heat mark right here, that's a heat mark. Uh, but they, they are, uh, they look kind of funky looking, you know. But that's the way they are. That's the way they are made. So uh, these steels are good. The frictions, they look kind of a good shape. Really? Uh, right. Yeah, they look in good shape. All right, 
we have our uh, an accumulator down here. Let's see if I can get this thing out. Accumulator uh, housing O ring. There's an accumulator here. Accumulator pin. You want to make sure you get it out, remove it. Sometimes the accumulator springs break. So you want to get them out. And uh, there's one inside the other. They go here. This accumulators wear out. So uh, get your pin and kind of wiggle it sideways and uh, make sure it doesn't have any play. This one looks in good shape. It feels good. It's not wobbly. If it is wobbly, then you need to replace it. Get out of the way. This is our channel play. Now right here, uh, you got to inspect this sleeve. This that, that sleeve right here is available separately. Uh, two uh, O-rings, they work here. Sometimes the bearing uh, wears out and uh, it digs the grooves into the sleeve. So if that happens, if that has happened, uh, this is available separately so you can replace just this sleeve here, you know, on the channel plate. We have two guide pins here or dowel pins. Can remove them. Turbine speed sensor. And uh, we have our we have a valve here which is very very critical. Trouble code P1811 uh, transmissions uh, transmission adapt. Transmission adapts, uh, maximum shift. I can't remember what, uh, what's exactly the name of it. Uh, it detects uh, excessive uh, apply, you know, time for apply. And uh, on the actuators are the solenoids. Uh, you got the pressure control solenoid. Uh, this valve wears out. There's an updated valve, and we're going to put an updated valve here. Actuator feet limit valve. This is our reluctor for our turbine speed sensor or our input speed sensor. This washer, these two washers here go on the channel plate. As you see here, one's Teflon coated and the other one's plastic. Get our reluctor ring. Now the chain. There's a lot of ways you can check for the chain wear. These chains are no good. It's, they're almost touching here. I mean, that's one way I check them. You know, sometimes you will, they will be nice and tight. These chains are worn out. They're touching right here. These chains have to be replaced. This is the overdrive clutch hub. Got another washer there. Now this one is an updated overdrive clutch hub. This one is heat treated at the splines here. Uh, earlier models, they had a tendency for the splines to strip and you would have first, second, and third and no overdrive. Uh, if you had no overdrive, more than likely the splines were stripped. Uh, I believe it was 2003. I'm not exactly sure when they went into with an updated overdrive clutch hub. Uh, this is available separately if you're working on a 98, 99. It has an earlier, earlier style. It, it's white. It doesn't look black like this. And uh, they do strip. So change them. This is an updated one. This is in good shape. This, we, this can be reused. Get that out of the way. Alright, let's go ahead and remove our chains and our sprockets. Kind of wiggle it. It should come out. There's another washer down here. Two oil dam deflectors here. This is considered there. I know there are two chains, but this is considered one chain. When you buy the chain for the 4065, both of them come in the same bag. This is considered one assembly. Both of them. Uh, earlier models 4060s is a single chain, and uh, they changed it for a double chain because uh, other than they are quieter. Uh, they last longer. I mean, you have two chains instead of one. All right, go ahead and get our uh, drive sprocket here. That's our drive sprocket support on the inside, and on the other side is the stator support for your torque burr. There's another washer inside here. 
plastic washer. Yeah, two ceiling rings here. Whenever this bearing here wears out, uh, it digs uh, into that sleeve that I was talking to you about on the channel plate. Now there are, there are different uh, setups for uh, sprockets here. This is the drive sprocket and this is the driven, drive and driven. Uh, 35 and 35 is the most common but you have a one that's supercharged and uh, I mean they do change so if something of those uh, went out uh, this bearing goes out it actually uh, damages the sprocket support from the inside so if that has happened then you need to get uh, new ones and you want to make sure that you uh, count the teeth on it and get the correct one let's go ahead and get this uh, This is the uh, piston housing for uh, fourth clutch on the top. You have two ceiling rings here for second clutch. And then you have the first and third in here on the input drum. That 13 millimeter bolt that I was talking to you about goes right here. Uh, if you don't tighten it up, you're gonna have a leak here. One for lubrication, one for second clutch, and the other one is for the other drum. We have another Teflon coated washer. This washer is no good. As you can see, the marks on it, and it looks like golden. I mean, you can see the golden metal already on there. So uh, this needs to be replaced. We have our reverse band. And this type of material, uh, it looks green. It's very dark green. Uh, they call them high energy uh, friction lining. That's what that is. Uh, this is our reverse band. Wraps around the second clutch drum. Second clutch. <clears throat> Another issue here for 1811. There's two washers here. Need to get them out. There's two washers in the back of the drum. One thrust and one bearing. Second clutch. This is very common. This is another issue for the uh, 1811 maximum adapt and long shift detected. I think that's what it says on the trouble code. If you can see that, see that? That's excessive clearance. That's a lot of clearance. We got to fix that. We got to fix that. The, the, there are selectable uh, steels for this. You can put two thick ones and then the rest of them. Uh, OE size and uh, you get your clutch, clutch clearance, clearance perfectly. Let's go ahead and inspect this uh, frictions. Sometimes you will see them in good shape like that. See that friction? It looks good. But it looks could be this deceiving. Not because it looks nice and red like that, that means that it's good. If you saw the uh, clearance on it, I mean, they are worn out. You got six clutch packs here. And rule of thumb, uh, 60, uh, it's 10 thousandths of an inch per clutch. And you got six clutches. Uh, that is what? 60 thousandths of an inch clearance. And I believe that was more, way more than 60 thousandths of an inch. Let's go ahead and get our second clutch drum. Second clutch over there. Inside there's a molded piston. I suggest you get the molded piston as well and replace the molded piston on second clutch. They do become uh, hard and they shrink and they leak fluid and uh, you would have like no one up, uh, no one two upshift. Go ahead and check our other frictions. The fluid is pretty bad. The transmission was slipping. If we see these are a uh, different color but they look in, in good shape you can see a little bit of a uh, black is the camera picking it up probably is not sure and then we have some single sided frictions here same thing here Although they look, they are a little dark actually. I mean, 
is just to age so they're not burn up. These come in the kit as an assembly like that. There are internal and external. This is this internal and external because this one has internal teeth. The teeth are on the inside and these have the teeth on the outside. External, internal. They come in the overhaul kit. So you don't have to worry about that. Reverse reaction shell. We have two sprags here, forward and third. Uh, they're ratchet type. I don't know if you can hear that. The bottom one as well. They do become damaged. You cannot open them, they're riveted, but you can separate them like that. We have one planetary gear here from Planet. Always check your uh, wiggle them, you know, side to side. Make sure that they have no play. This one is in good shape. It's very rare that you see this planet here damaged. The one that does get damaged is this one here, very frequently. I'm going to show you one thing right here. If you look at it, on the bottom, you can see a brass washer and then you can see a metal washer. You have two washers. On top here, the brass washer is gone. All you got is just the, the metal washer. On this one here, you can see the brass washer. On the bottom one as well, you can see both of them. And you go all the way around. And this is the only one that's missing the brass washer. There is a washer. There are washers for this thing. You just take the pin out, replace the washers, and uh, put the pin back in. And kind of tack weld it, you know, so that the pins won't walk out on you. Fix that, or you can get a new plant. Another bearing. We have a uh, one-way clutch here, one-way roller. If you look at this bushing, see how shiny that is? It's worn out. One-way clutch. This is where the forward band uh, clamps onto. Uh, this is where the uh, low intermediate clamps onto. If you have this assembly holding holding it like this, it turns counterclockwise and it locks to the clock. Now there is a noise uh, that one-way roller clutches make. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it. That is considered normal. Two bands down here. The low intermediate band. It looks like a little baby uh, 4L80 band or 400 band. And we got our forward band here as well. You see the material. It's green. It's high energy. These bands are prone for breaking right here. Whenever the band breaks from here, at the applied point where the servo applies the band, uh, you will have no forward engagement at all. I mean, you can probably put it in manual low or manual first or manual second and it will probably try to move, but whenever that happens, this band already snapped. All right, so we got our uh, differential planetary carrier in there. Let's go ahead and get, let's go ahead and get a long screwdriver all right the the hose got caught on the tripod so there you go uh, you see the snap uh, snap ring down there we take that snap ring out remove the snap ring and it will not come out. I haven't taken the pan off yet. There is a lubrication pipe that goes into it. Let's go ahead and take that off. Forgot about that. Let's go ahead and take the pan off.
here's our pan if you look at the condition of the pan it kind of looks in you know somewhat okay shape you have a little bit of a normal wear and tear on the magnet you can see some converter clutch uh, material here around where the filter goes for filter area goes the filter it's on the bucket underneath the car filter goes here this is what I was talking about right here this is lubrication if this happens to pop out from here or from here uh, your planets are gonna get wiped out no lubrication right. Sonics makes a bracket a hold down bracket that goes in between those two pipes and it holds them down uh, so it won't come out so you won't have that issue all right three tens there on the lower intermediate go ahead and take the ones around right here and that would remove our uh, accumulator housing millimeters go ahead and get this thing out the good thing about this here on the accumulator housing is that it is marked that's the one two accumulator and there's a two three accumulator there is a seal right here you need to be careful and whenever you go back with it, you know, you make sure that this seal, it's installed. If it's not installed, it's not, the, the band is not going, going to uh, apply. The servo is not going to apply and it's going to have the same symptom as when the band is broke. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take this apart and check the accumulators. That's our cover. Multi gasket. This one comes in the kit. Now, they are marked on this side as well. Two, three, and one, two. See that? The two, three accumulator takes the thicker or the heavier spring, the one, two accumulator takes the smaller spring. Same thing with this uh, accumulators. Do the wiggle test. This one feels pretty good. Wiggle test on this one. That feels pretty good as well. They are available separately. You can get this uh, all three accumulators. You can actually get all three of them. I mean, I always put all three of them knowing that they do wear out and uh, it depends on the warranty that you're going to give your customer. Uh, it is very important that outlives the warranty period. Uh, there we go. All right, so now this comes out. Here's our parking pole. And our parking gear goes on top of the differential. There's one more bearing here. So now our case is empty. We got the forward servo here. Forward servo. There's some updated lip seals for the forward and reverse servos. Uh, as you can see here, the lip is kind of short. The updated uh, lip seal has got the longer lip. Sometimes with wear, the lip kind of rolls, this type of lip. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this, uh, take this to the foot press. I'm going to go ahead and take these pistons out. I need to show you the forward piston. Uh, sometimes it wears out and it needs to be replaced. 
sometimes the lip seal, the inner lip seal gets cut. And if it does get cut, uh, there is actually an updated one that comes on the shift kit. Transgo, by the way. It's like a D, uh, it's a leaf cut seal, actually, uh, in the shape of a D instead of a lip seal. Uh, and it works fairly well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put you on pause. I'm gonna go to the footprints and uh, and disassemble this drum. Okay, I got uh, everything out of the drum. Here at the bottom, it takes a lip seal, already took it out, and then it takes another lip seal up here. Our, I have already removed that as well. This is the lip seal that goes on the forward drum. It's a short lip. The new one comes with the longer lip. And this lip here, it rolls sometimes and you will have no forward engagement. Sometimes the piston will uh, wear out and it would tear the lip on this uh, lip seal. Same thing with this. The updated one that comes in the kit has a longer lip. As you can see that the lip is real real small, real, real short. It's just plain wore out. I mean, short lip as well. Now the problem here, let me go ahead and just wipe this thing off a little bit. The issue on some units, the piston wear, so you gotta kinda see how shiny this is right here. Now, I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but there's a little line, but there is no groove. There's a shadow there that looks like wear. So you've got to go all the way around and check it. And uh, this piston looks in good shape. This is reusable. Sometimes you will see on one side, uh, and you can feel it with your fingernails. If you can feel it with your fingernails, the piston is no good, and it needs to be replaced. Here's the molded piston. This piston comes in the kit if you order the kit with molded pistons. There's two molded pistons in this unit. This here and the one for second clutch. Second clutch is a must to install. So uh, it's best just to get the uh, overhaul kit with molded pistons. All right, 1465, basic, basic tear down on this unit. Uh, and I mentioned I was gonna show you something on the valve body. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put you on pause, get that valve out, and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so we determined that the valve that's in here, there's two valves here. The valve that's in here, it's in the stroke position, it's all the way in. We have a clip here that we need to remove. This one, I'm going to grab it with my... Uh, vice grips and sometimes it's a pain to get out so I hope that for the video uh, we will be successful if, if I'm struggling uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause it and get the thing out uh, so we don't waste a lot of time and then when I get it out we'll come back to it but hopefully it will come out on video right let me get my vice grips on it just to hold it kind of like twist it oh there we go it is gonna come out success sometimes I mean you will struggle with that thing for like 20 minutes until it comes out all right let's see if I can get this valve out there we go this valve gets hung up fairly easily. Spring goes in first, and then the valve. And you want to inspect that, see how nice and dark gray it is? That's the way that it should be. This valve is in good shape. You can see a little bit of uh, aluminum there. A little bit. But this valve is still good. Just a little hairline scratch right there. But sometimes you would see scratches all the way through. And when you see that, the valve is considered no good. 
and not only the valve the inside of the bore as well let's go ahead and disassemble this the same thing happens to this one it has a clip right here let's go ahead and push it from the back side push it a little bit and then get our pick in there get the clip out okay we get the end plug out there's a spring inside the plug and it will be hung up and it is hung up yep you can feel it dragging there we go same scenario here you inspect the valve if it looks in good shape it can be reused now this is the very common uh, valve lineup that you always have issues with it the valves being that clean uh, no scratches and all uh, run your uh, bench buddies through the bore and uh, they will work sometimes on the torque converter clutch the valve apply the apply valve on the torque converter clutch uh, it wears out especially on this late model units uh, there is an updated valve from Sonics that has a ceiling ring on it uh, I recommend and I suggest that you guys always put that install that valve that valve in there that has a ceiling ring on it otherwise uh, you would have a uh, torque converter clutch codes or no torque converter clutch engagement uh, and you know issues with your torque converter clutch this end plug right here takes an o-ring go ahead and take it out just so you'll know that you're working on one of these but that o-ring gets replaced this is our torque converter clutch uh, solenoid and as you see this plug here it has an o-ring and it's flat so this is no longer good put this over here what I do with the clip right here and let's get this valve out you will have issues with uh, lockup as well torque converter clutch if that end plug is leaking all right well this concludes the basic teardown I mean there's a lot more that I can go to I mean I can go through but I mean I think this is fairly enough for this 4T65 uh, he's gonna need a bushing kit uh, overhaul kit, we're going to need the second clutch piston, uh, we need to take care of that, we need the uh, updated valve for here, we need the uh, actuator fit limit valve for the channel plate, and actually I get that from uh, Superior, uh, actuator fit limit valve, I get the Sonics valve for this, uh, pressure control solenoid and torque over clutch solenoid, just to, to make sure that you don't get the 1811 back again, uh, the EPC solenoid, especially the large can, the early type, uh, they do get stuck and they do give you the uh, 1811 trouble code. Uh, that's about it. Two shift solenoids and we're in business. Alright guys, well my name is Hiram. Uh, basic teardown video on a 4T65E. Uh, thank you for watching.